Welcome, everybody. I have got another fantastic scientist who is super awesome, and I'm excited to introduce you to her. It is Dr. Rebecca Goolsby. Rebecca, how's it going? It's going fairly well. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome, and I am really excited to learn from Rebecca, and I hope you all are too, because she's just awesome. First of all, I, mean, I know this because we've been friends for like at least six minutes, and also because she does something that you don't hear about a lot. So I'm really excited and I'll kind of let her take it from here. Rebecca, kind of, you are a program officer at Office of Naval Research, kind of focused on the social sciences, correct? Yes. So kind of tell us what social science is. Well, social science is the study of people, uh, people mostly in groups. Like psychology is about the individual human being, uh, but, uh, but the social sciences are about people in communities. I was trained formally as an anthropologist, which means that I uh, that most of my work was overseas doing cross cultural work. Uh, but today, I the the community that I study are the tribes and 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 societies on the internet. Wow, that is that is I didn't know we had tribes and societies on the. On oh the internet. yeah, <laughs> of course we do. Uh, we call them cyber social communities. Okay. Social cyber communities. We still haven't figured out the nomenclature. Oh, we're working on uh, the development of a brand new field called cyber social science. Uh, and that will take, you know, the field of looking and observing people out in, uh, you know, on Instagram, on in, in chat rooms, all of those sorts of things. Uh, and uh, beginning to understand how it is that people um, associate and, and, form new identities and get new understandings of the world through the internet. Well, I'm sure that's, I can imagine how complex that can be because I assume we are very different online than we are offline. Well, we can be, I mean, you have a choice and that's the thing. Uh, some people come online and build something entirely new and try out an entirely new identity. I've gotten to the point where I never can guess if a man, if a person online that I'm engaging with is a man or a woman uh, from the United States or somewhere else. I mean, there are always little tells, but uh, really people are able to kind of construct new ways of, of going at social engagement and trying out new forms of behavior, you know, to see, you know, how that feels and what that's like. Uh, and that can really, you know, change the way you feel about yourself. Yeah, that's very interesting. So, Rebecca, how did you get involved in this? Were you, were you that, or like a okay. ten-year-old just kind of watching kids all day? And like, when I was really, when I was really young, um, my mother remarried a computer scientist, and okay. uh, and he got me all involved in computer science, um, and I began teaching uh, young people from uh, from other countries, and uh, and. Uh, and through them, I got interested in other cultures, and I ended up switching over uh, to an anthropology degree. And I've had always had like a double major in anthropology and in computer science. I wanted to study how the internet was going to change the world, because the young women I was working with uh, were from Islamic countries, and they were telling me things like they wanted to begin become computer scientists because it had no gender. Yeah. So, uh, so I could see that. A computer science was going to change the world. Uh, when I th then when I, I went to graduate school, I, I went to Thailand. I did a lot of uh, field work, and I came back and I had a baby, and I got on something called Usenet, which was the very earliest social media. Okay. And my Usenet group was attacked by the anti-vaxer community. Wow. This was in 1989. And I was fascinated by human behavior, by how these people were not only exploding in, in anti-vaxxer groups, we, but at the time between about 1987 and about 1991, I mean, the Usenet groups yeah. were invaded uh, with the trolls. Uh, and so I was uh, really interested in that. And fast forward, after I taught for uh, many years, I got to the University of Washington, uh, got, got to, uh, uh, or the Office of Naval Research. Um, I was still interested in how the new information environment was changing people's behavior. So I, I uh, uh, when we start, I started out at uh, Office of Naval Research in 2000, oh, we were talking about, at the time, how information and the computer, computer age was changing command and control relationships. So we're interested in how uh, the admirals and the 
and the colonels didn't have as much situational awareness as the corporals and the captains. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so they hired me on to kind of look at that. And I asked them, well, what about your online adversaries like Al Qaeda? And they were interested in that, but they didn't think of it as a naval responsibility. Of course, it, uh, they did give me leave to do some work in the area. And in 2001, of course, we had uh, the 9-11 event. And yes. uh, then I began doing work in this area, uh, uh, sponsoring a great deal of research. Uh, and that's kind of how we started. Okay, fantastic, Rebecca. Thank you. Where, what is going on right now in the science? In the, you said we're kind of creating a new cyber social science. What's happening right now in the field? Well, what, right now in the field, we're beginning to look at uh, how people behave online and offline. Because those are two important parts of behavior. Yes. Uh, the you know the Department of State did a wonderful program called Countering Violent Extremism for a number of years uh, on looking at how that worked out with ISIS. Okay, and so they looked at a lot of online behaviors with ISIS and a lot of offline behaviors and tried to understand the process of social of self radicalization. Uh, and so we, we we need to understand more of that. Uh, because it's more than just, uh, you know, people in ISIS. People, people can be self-radicalized in a lot of ways. Uh, so understanding uh, how, how people get dragged into, uh, into radicalizing behavior is important. When you, uh, when you say studying online behavior, how are you doing? Are you, like, watching my Instagram feed? Are you watching? <laughs> what are, how yours. are you doing that? <laughs> not, not yours. Uh, most of the work that we do is out of universities. So, you know, so the people who work for us are at universities all across the, the planet. Uh, so I fund researchers who do the research, who then explain to us uh, how to understand what's going on in the environment. Uh, we need to understand so that when we're dealing with a crisis, like say, let's say that uh, we had Seabees uh, rebuilding a play, uh, you know, something in, yeah. uh, in, in on the, the Philippines. You know, we need to understand how a rumor might get started how we might quash that rumor or, or, or what can we do to make sure that the information about our operations is free of disinformation and, and, and that we're not getting into ridiculous information conflicts with adversaries. So, so that's how, our focus. How are you doing it though? Are you using data? Oh, how well, are you okay, so what we do is we, we have research in the university community and they provide us with the knowledge and then we transfer that knowledge in workshops uh, and in sometimes we develop new tools and technologies to help the, uh, the, 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 the public affairs people uh, to have better what we call information environment assessment so that they can see what's out there in the environment more clearly uh, you know, and uh, understand the discourses and the narratives that are going on and be able to be on the lookout for disinformation and social hysteria propagation and that, those sorts of things. So in, in layman's terms, because I'm a layman, yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how are you capturing it, though? Are you like watching? Is it just do you just plug into the Internet and just record everything? Do you search? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, everybody you, has this vision vision that we, that we look at everything. <laughs> okay, and first, nobody has that capability to look at just about everything. Uh, but let's give you an example. For Trident Juncture 18, um, I worked with the Canadians, and we did a, an experimental, their, their universities and our university did an experimental assessment of the information environment around a military exercise. Okay. During, yeah, during the military exercise, the Russians uh, said that they were going to have missile tests quite near where Trident Juncture was going to be. Uh, and so there was a whole lot of associated um, um, talking of, about the, uh, the, the missile strikes. Some, what we, uh, some people trying to be very frightened, very afraid, World War III, that kind of thing, that kind of rumor, and other people talking about different aspects of it. And so for the, for the people who are running the exercise, they need to know, you know how much of the kind of rumors are floating around about, about what the Russians are doing because all eyes are on NATO at that moment. Uh, you know, so uh, the universities used um, uh, commercially available tools, uh, but none of, them, none of them are terribly intrusive. Uh, you know, we're interested, not interested in individuals at all. 
uh, and as a matter of fact, when you actually operationalize this stuff, usually it's highly anonymized because there are a lot of constraints on the military on what they can see. But we're not really interested in the individual so much as we are interested in understanding the information flow. You know, yeah. are, is there disinformation uh, out there? You know, is there social hysteria out there? A lot of people think about this as trying to shut people up. But really, usually the problem is we need to put out more information. We need to outcompete uh, the disinformation. Uh, but you need okay. to know what the level of competition is in order to, to ramp up messaging and to improve the quality of messaging in order to outcompete. Okay, so Rebecca, let me ask you this. Where, do you, where is this going in 20 years? Oh, this? I, you know, I don't really know where it's going to go in 20 months. Okay, uh, this is one of the most rapidly evolving fields because it, it depends on people, you know. So, as people and as uh, get more understanding and more savvy, more knowledgeable about bad behavior on yeah. the internet, about things that are inauthentic, things that aren't real, um, they are should, they are a, more able to help each other uh, to figure out what's wrong and what's going on uh, and that sort of thing. And so that's part of the reason why we do all this unclassified research. We're interested in, uh, in the universities providing the knowledge out there to the world so that they can, uh, so that the, the communities themselves can fend off inauthentic users, you know, uh, you know that are trying to invade their communities and so dis so hysteria and rumors and try to fend those people off, how to fend them off better. Uh, and how to organize a community so that they're resilient against disinformation. Okay, interesting. And so, how, how long have you worked in Navy and the Marine Corps? Okay, I started at uh, ONR in uh, 2000. Uh, you know, this is my uh, 20th anniversary this month. Okay, happy anniversary! Congratulations. <laughs> so, as, in, in your time um, inside the Navy, how have you had any unique experiences? Oh, many. I mean, uh, I went out. Can to, you share one with us? Well, you know, well, you know, I'm trying to think. The, you know, the, the one of the things that reasons uh, researchers love to work with me is that we uh, do a lot of workshops and efforts out, you know, in the world. We work closely with NATO, and I've, okay. uh, I've, uh, we we conducted a, a workshop for four days at the Latvian Defense Academy in, in Riga, Latvia. That was wonderful. Uh, we've, uh, we work closely with uh, the Latvians, with the Center of Excellence for, uh, uh, for Strategic Communication out in Riga, Latvia. Uh, we, were, we, were, we were invited to uh, do a technical demonstration at Trident Juncture 15 on site. So they actually sent us, we actually got to go to Zaragoza, Spain uh, for, uh, th for three weeks, uh, helping them to understand uh, the, the information environment on social media. Uh, relevant to uh, that exercise back in 2015. So some of the, you know, so uh, one of the, that's one of the things we, we get to do is we get to um, get involved with the with the community. Uh, my mm -hmm. researchers teach, you know, the the things that we learn and know about how uh, social, how bad actors, how how adversaries work mm -hmm. in the information environment. And so that's a, a lot of fun, and and people really mm -hmm. enjoy working with our, our young people in the at SOCOM and and the MIGs and things like that, the Marine Corps. Fantastic. Rebecca, is there anything else you want folks to know about the science of social science? Well, you know, well, we're, this is going to change a lot. Uh, one, and one of the hard parts is going to be developing a social science, uh, you know, of, uh, of this behavior, uh, you know, out there in the, in the, in the real world. The academics have, uh, have not yet been very bold uh, at developing this, they, they they kind of hung back on the study of of uh, social cyber phenomenon, uh, and uh, and uh, so a lot of it has ended up in uh, the defense department because we uh, take more risks in uh, right. in in that. Uh, you know, uh, people get very worried about working with the Department of Defense. They think we're all you know kind of like evil people, but you know that's kind of a story that has been told. I've been very happy working with. Uh, working in the Department of Defense, I've, uh, I have, uh, you know, there have been times when I, when, when people suggested things that made me go, mm, you know, but, uh, you know, but we were able to calm them down and talk them, talk sure. about reality. Because there's always hawks who don't understand what's going on. But for the mo more part, I have found that my relationships 
uh, with and, and, and the, the ethical level of uh, the Department of Defense is very, very high. And I've been very, very pleased and proud to be working with them uh, for these, these many years. Fantastic. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, I th I mean, the last thing, p p word I would like to, to say, tell young people is this. If you're interested in technology, go take some art courses. If you're interested in the arts, go take some technology courses. I mean, the, when, when uh, you know, I have young people in my house and, uh, and I, I work a lot with young people, young graduate students and that sort of thing. And uh, the kinds of fields that are going to exist in 20 years have no names. Uh, my daughter designs drones and satellites. Very what cool. a concept. I mean, when she was a girl, I mean, the idea of, of a drone wasn't even there. So what I want to tell the young people is, you know, cross-pollinate, do lots of different things. Uh, bring in the arts, bring in the sciences, and you will uh, have amazing opportunities open up downstream. That is great advice. I think it's very important to remember that diversity of thought. It's yeah. not just one thing and you're just combining everything together. Yeah, so people call to talk about STEM. I like to talk yeah. about STEAM, uh, science, technology, and arts. Uh, you you know, and uh, and I, I think that the future is in STEAM. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you, Rebecca, so much for your time. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, see ya. Bye-bye. Folks, you learned there some awesome things going on in social science. I didn't even know they did that kind of thing. So now I got to make sure to clean up my Instagram so Rebecca's not tracking me. No, I'm not important enough to track it, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, where do you guys think this is going? She talked about some things that she says it is now. Where's it going in the future? Who knows? I know who, who probably knows is you because you're the folks who are going to help us take it to the future. And as Rebecca said, broaden your mind and you never know what you'll come up with next. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.